This week at Starbase. As production continues at the build site and work continues on the next orbital launch pad, Booster 14 is made ready and relocated to the launch site for its test campaign ahead of the upcoming Flight 7. Now let's dig into this week's update. Starting off this week in the early hours of Saturday morning, a concrete pump truck set up inside the D2 gate and began placing fresh concrete in the new commodities trench. Some eight hours later, the pour was finished and the truck packed up and headed out. On Monday morning, crews began removing the temporary fencing panels that separated the Tower 2 build area from Highway 4. Later, two SPMTs headed out from the build site and turned up Highway 4 towards the Massey outpost. Given that no vehicles were currently at the site, these transporters were likely on their way to pick up the static fire stand for Ship 31's upcoming test campaign. That afternoon, back at the build site, Rover 1 camera caught the raceways being lifted and moved over towards Ship 34 in the front right corner of Mega Bay 2 for installation. Early on Tuesday, the transport and storage stand for the ship lifters was brought over from the Sanchez site and staged outside of Mega Bay 2. Several hours later, the Mega Bay 2 door opened further, revealing that Ship 34 had been moved from the turntable in the corner of the building to the workstation in the middle of the back of the bay. The stand for the lifting jigs was then moved into the building, moving past Ship 34 and disappearing off to the right. Once the stand was in place, the Block 2 ship lifter was moved over and then lowered onto it. Later that morning, a single ring was brought out of Star Factory, picked up by a crane, and taken towards the scrapyard. Around that same time, over at the office construction site, a crane was spotted lifting a bundle of roofing material up to the top of the building for an eventual installation. Down at the launch site complex, a concrete pump truck unfurled its boom and lowered the business end down between two of the tanks in the orbital tank farm to begin placing new concrete. That afternoon, SpaceX's LR-11000 was used to lift a catch net back to the new launch tower for reinstallation. LabCam caught the platform spinning on the hook during this process. Meanwhile, back at the build site, one of the booster transport stands was brought out of the Sanchez site and parked in the ring yard in preparation for Booster 14's relocation to the launch site. Back at the launch complex, a crane was seen lifting a piece of steel and lowering it for installation into the under construction commodities trench. SpaceX's large crawler crane used its auxiliary hook to lift a relatively small object up to the side of the new launch tower. However, there appeared to be an issue, possibly with the wind, and the object was lowered back to the ground. As the afternoon wore on, another two steel pieces were lowered into the commodities trench for installation. On Wednesday morning, a trio of SPMTs were spotted driving up Highway 4 away from the launch complex. It's not clear exactly what they had been doing there. Around that same time, a large covered delivery truck pulled into the ring yard gate. The truck then lined up and backed into Star Factory to unload. Down at the launch site, preparations were underway for Booster 14's pre-launch testing campaign. To that end, the hood on the Booster Quick Disconnect was opened. Shortly after noon, a pair of partially tiled flap arrow covers were spotted heading out of the build site on a trailer. It's not clear if these were removed from a ship or were test articles, nor if they're being scrapped or sent off for some other reason. That afternoon, the loudspeaker at the launch site warned of upcoming testing. Attention all personnel on the orbital pad. We will begin hazardous testing on the launch mount soon. Please start clearing the launch mount pad deck and fluid smoker. A short time later, we could hear what sounded like test actuations of the clamp arms on the launch mount. A bit after that, visible purging was observed from the ports on the booster quick disconnect. That test was followed relatively quickly by purging from the Raptor Boost quick disconnects. As testing continued, several additional intermittent purges were seen from the main booster quick disconnect. In the early hours of Thursday morning, the booster transport stand was rolled out of the ring yard and into Mega Bay 1 for Booster 14. 
Later that morning, a new pipe stand was brought to the launch complex. After partially pulling in the main gate, the truck eventually pulled over to the side of Highway 4 to await the offload. A new green load spreader arrived on the back of the truck and headed down towards the D4 gate at the launch site. Over by the new launch tower, SpaceX's crane lifted what appeared to be a cover for the commodities trench next to the new flame trench. The cover was lifted and test fitted before being returned to its resting place. At the build site, a new ship flap was delivered to the ring yard area. In short order, a forklift removed the flap from the trailer and took it into Star Factory. That afternoon, a concrete pump truck was once again busy at the launch complex. As has been seen a lot lately, the pour seemed to be taking place in the new commodities trench between the tank farm and the new launch pad. Later that afternoon, we could see tiebacks being installed in the commodities trench. These are installed to help anchor the sides of the structure deep into the surrounding soil. Late that afternoon, Booster 14 was lifted off of one of the work stands in Mega Bay 1 and transferred to the awaiting transport stand as SpaceX prepares to roll out the next Super Heavy for testing just over two weeks after the last launch. That night, the booster was rolled out of the building, then after straightening back out its grid fins, rolled to the gate and out onto Highway 4. Once the Flight 7 first stage arrived at the launch complex, it went over to Pad A and parked between Mechazilla's arms. As the rocket left the build site, Booster 16's forward section snuck out of Star Factory and rolled across the ring yard. Just a short time later, the section was taken into Mega Bay 1 as SpaceX prepares for stacking of the next Super Heavy. Late that night, as SpaceX was preparing to lift Booster 14 onto the launch mount, the work platform transport stand was moved away from the pad area. Shifting over to Florida, on Friday morning, Falcon 9 Booster 1080 was moved from the dock onto the processing stand for stowage operations. As the calendar clicked over to Saturday, Booster 1083 lit up the Florida skies as it lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40, sending another 24 Starlink satellites on their way to orbit. Later that morning, the great Greg Scott was at Port Canaveral to capture the return of Booster 1078 on a short fall of Gravitas as Falcon 9's first stage return from its 15th mission. And just a few hours later, the rocket was lifted off of the drone ship and placed on the dock to await its turn on the stand. The next afternoon, a short fall of Gravitas was towed back out to sea in preparation for booster recovery for another Starlink launch. Around that same time, Bob returned to Port Canaveral carrying both fairing halves from Saturday's Starlink launch. About 13 hours later, Just Read the Instructions also returned carrying Booster 1083 from that same mission. Several hours later, the rocket was lifted up onto the increasingly crowded dock to allow the drone ship to be prepared for departure. Just an hour later, Doug was spotted leaving the port to join a short fall of Gravitas in supporting the Starlink Group 6-70 launch. A few hours after that, preparations on Just Read the Instructions were complete and the drone ship was towed back out to sea for the SXM-9 mission. That night, dockside processing was finished for Booster 1080 and the rocket was laid on a transporter for its return to SpaceX's Roberts Road facilities. Tuesday afternoon, Bob pushed off the dock and headed out to sea to recover another pair of fairing halves. Early on Wednesday, Falcon 9 Booster 1067 lifted off for an astonishing 24th time as the flight-leading booster lofted another 24 satellites to orbit. Later, Booster 1078 had finished leg stowage operations and was moved to an awaiting transporter for the journey to Hangar X. That afternoon, SpaceX's dockside crew continued to work through, clearing the dock as the now lonely Booster 1083 was moved to the processing stand. Over at Historic Launch Complex 39A, the crane activity continued. Yet more cranes continue to appear as work proceeds on both of the chopsticks and the vertical liquid oxygen tank. That night, our CAPE camera caught SpaceX rolling out Booster 1076 along with its second stage and payload in preparation for their launch. And shortly thereafter, the rocket was raised vertical as its launch window grew closer. 
Then, a bit after 11 on Thursday morning, the rocket lifted off for the SXM-9 mission, sending another radio satellite on its way to geostationary transfer orbit for Sirius XM. That afternoon, back over at the port, Booster 1083 was lowered onto an awaiting transporter, finally clearing the dock of rockets. That night, Doug returned with both of the recovered fairing halves from the Starlink Group 6-70 mission. And just a few hours later, a short follow Gravitas was towed into port as well, carrying the Falcon 9 fleet leading booster following its 24th successful mission. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, guys, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.